this video presents the Modigliani and Miller theory with corporate tax. This video is divided into four parts. First of all, the tax shield. Second part, the cost of equity. Third part, the adjusted cost of capital. And we will terminate with the Amada formula, which goes beyond what's been developed by Modigliani and Miller. Let's start with the tax shield. In order to establish the formula, we are going to take into account two firms which have the same EBIT. One of the firms is unlevered and the other one is levered. Tau is the corporate tax rate and I is the cost of debt, the amount of the outstanding debt being D. In terms of quotations, we are going to say that the remuneration of the funds providers to the unlevered firm will be noted X star, whereas the remuneration of the funds providers to the levered firm will be noted X. For the enterprise value, we'll try to look for uh, the enterprise value of the unlevered firm will be EV star, whereas the, remuneration, the, the enterprise value of the levered firm will be noted EV. If we uh, want to calculate X star, which is the remuneration of the funds providers, to the unlevered firm. The funds providers to uh, the, the unlevered firm correspond to the shareholders, and the shareholders receive the net income. As the firm has no leverage or no debt, there is no interest to be paid, which means that the net income can be directly calculated based on EBIT, uh, and then the net income is EBIT times one less the corporate tax rate, corresponding to the net operating profit after tax. If now we want to calculate uh, the remuneration of the funds providers to the levered firm, which means X, we have to keep in mind that we have two stakeholders which provide funds. You have on the one end the shareholders, and we have on the other end the lenders. The shareholders receive the net income, which is of course based on the pre-tax profit. The pre-tax profit of the levered firm is EBIT less interest, which means cost of debt applied to the amount of the outstanding debt, namely D. This is the pre-tax profit, and to get the net income, we have to multiply by one less two. The lenders receive ID. Of course, we can develop what's inside the first bracket, and then we have EBIT times 1 Nesto, less ID times 1 Nesto, plus ID. And we can see that less ID times 1 plus ID uh, is equal to 0, which means, at the end of the day, that X is equal to EBIT times 1 Nesto, uh, plus ID times 2 which means if we prefer X star plus ID2. Let's calculate the enterprise value of the unlevered firm. The enterprise value of the unlevered firm can be looked upon as a perpetual sum of uh, future net income. The net income of the unlevered firm is EBIT times 1 Nesto, and if we want to calculate a sum of present values of future net incomes to perpetuity, we simply have to divide by the discount rate. And if we deal with the unlevered firm, the cost of capital of the unlevered firm, which is also its cost of equity, is noted down rho by uh, Modigliani and Miller, which means that we have uh, X star over rho. If we now want to calculate the enterprise value of the levered firm, we have to base our calculation on X, which is equal to X star plus I ditto. We know that X star can be divided by rho. And if we want to calculate the perpetual sum of I ditto, we have absolutely uh, to keep in mind that uh, I D2 is consistent in terms of discount rate with I. And then we can simplify by I and we can say that EV is X star over rho, which is EV star plus D2. This is an important output. 
because first of all, assuming that d2 is positive, it implies that EV is higher than EV star. I mean that the enterprise value of the levered firm is higher than the enterprise value of the enterprise value of the unlevered firm, which means that leverage enables to create some value. And the difference between EV and EV star is equal to D2. We, we could be a bit surprised to multiply a debt by a corporate tax rate. I mean that we are used to multiplying a debt by an interest rate, by a cost of debt in order to have interest. But D times 2 is not a usual uh, operation. But we have to keep in mind where it comes from. I mean that D2 is I D2 over I. ID is the amount of interest. ID2 is interest times corporate tax rate, which corresponds exactly to the uh, yearly tax saving. And if we divide by I, it means that we take into account a perpetual sum of tax savings, which means that the difference between EV and EV star can be looked upon as the tax shield, which means that the levered firm has a higher enterprise value compared to the unlevered firm because it has an additional asset, this additional asset being the tax shield. So, having said that, we are going to move to the second part, which will be the cost of equity, according to Modigliani and Miller the cost of equity according to Modigliani and Miller. So, uh, the cost of equity uh, according to Modigliani and Miller is calculated before the CAPM of William Sharp. So, the cost of equity is the expected return by shareholders, which means the expected net income divided by equity. We know that the net income is the EBIT less interests id which is a pre-tax profit times one less two in order to take into account taxation over equity of course we can develop and say that we have the expected ebit times one less two over equity less id one less two over equity Then we are going to do the following. We are going to say that we have the expected EBIT times 1 Nesto without any change compared to the previous line. And instead of dividing directly by equity, we are going to divide and to multiply simultaneously by EV star, which is the enterprise value of the unlevered firm. So less ID 1 Nesto over equity. And uh, we can keep in mind what's been established here. I mean that we uh, know, first of all, that EV star is EV less D2 because EV is EV star plus D2 over equity. And we can keep in mind that here we have the net income divided by uh, the equity or uh, the net income divided by uh, the enterprise value of the unlevered firm, uh, which corresponds to the cost of equity of the unlevered firm, which is noted uh, rho by Modigliani and Miller. And then we can say less i d 1 less 2 over equity. Of course, uh, we can say that enterprise value is equity plus debt, and then we deduct D2 over equity less I1 less 2 debt to equity. And of course, we can again develop and say that we have rho times 1 plus D1 less 2 over equity less I1 less 2 debt over equity. And of course, to terminate, we can say that we have rho times 1, which is rho, plus we recognize that we have a common factor here, d1 less 2 over e, so 1 less 2 d over e, 
the first d1 nesto over e being multiplied by rho and the second one by less i. This is the cost of equity, according to Modigliani and Miller. Now we are going to deal with the adjusted cost of capital. The adjusted cost of capital corresponds to another way to uh, present the cost of capital. We know that the cost of capital, namely the WAC, is the cost of equity times the weight of equity in the financing plus the after-tax cost of debt times the weight of debt in the financing. We can very simply replace K by, by what's been established above. Then big K is rho plus rho less i, 1 less 2, debt to equity, this is for K, times E over E plus D plus I, 1 less 2, D over E plus D. Of course, we can develop and say that we have rho times E over E plus D, plus uh, rho less I, 1 less D times D over E times E over E plus D, and plus I, 1 less 2, D over E plus D. Then we are going to simplify by E here. And we have k, which is rho times e over e plus d, plus developing what we have there, rho times 1 less 2 d over e plus d, less i times 1 less 2 d over e plus d. And we terminate with that, plus i 1 less 2 d over e plus d. And we can see very easily that these two terms simplify. And if we factor with rho, we have then rho times e over e plus d, plus rho times 1 is rho, plus d over e plus d, less rho to times d over e plus d. e plus d over a e plus d is equal to 1, which means that k is rho times 1 less... Uh, Sorry, there is no rho here because it's been factored here. 1 less d2 over e plus d. This is the adjusted cost of capital. And we can say that if d is narrowing plus infinity, and then if d over e is narrowing plus infinity, this uh, has a limit equal to rho. To tau, sorry, which means that the limit is rho times 1 less tau, which means that we can say that we have an horizontal asymptote, y is rho times 1 less tau, and then we can see that the cost of capital is decreasing, okay, in order to take into account this asymptote. And this is consistent with the fact that if the cost of capital is decreasing from a DCF point of view, the enterprise value is increasing, which means that below we can say that if we have on the, the x-axis debt to equity, if we say that, for example, EV star is there, the enterprise value is there. And of course, this enterprise value is broken down into two components, First of all, EV star plus D2 corresponding to the tax shield. Having said that, we can move to the very last part, which is the AMADA formula. The AMADA formula is a formula which enables to get the unleveled beta and the releveled beta. Let's say that we are going to use the CAPM. The CAPM is the cost of equity is equal to the risk free rate plus the beta times the market risk premium, which is there. The cost of equity can be replaced by its... The cost of equity, according to Modigliani and Miller, is going now to be mixed with the CAPM. If we deal with Modigliani and Miller, we know that K is rho plus rho less i, 1 less 2, debt to, e debt to equity. If we now replace K here by 
the CAPM, we are going to say that we have, taking that into account, the risk we rate plus the beta times the market risk premium. Then we can say that it is equal to rho. Rho is the cost of capital of the unlevered firm, and if the firm has no leverage, the cost of its capital is the cost of its equity. So we can say RF plus beta star, beta of the unlevered firm, times the market risk premium. That's it for the first rho, which will be highlighted in red, for example. Then we have plus rho less i which means that we can say that we have, again, what's in red, Rf plus beta i times uh, the market risk premium. So the same formula in red. Less i, but i, the cost of debt, can also be calculated based on the CAPM. We can say that it is the risk free rate plus the beta of the debt times the market risk premium. Of course, we have already taken into account the less sign, changing the signs of the two components of uh, the CIPM formula. And we terminate multiplying by one less to debt to equity. We can see, firstly, that we have RF and RF, both sides, which simplify. Inside the big bracket, we have plus RF, less RF, which simplify. And we can notice that all the remaining terms are all factored by the market risk premium, which by definition is not equal to zero. So we can divide all the terms, I mean what's on the left and what's on the right, of the equal sign by the market risk premium. And if we terminate with what's not been simplified, we have beta i, which is beta i star plus beta i uh, star, which has been forgotten here because it's the same in red here, less beta d times 1 less 2 times debt to equity. We can imagine in order to simplify that beta d is equal to zero. If beta d is equal to zero, which means that uh, uh, the corporate debt is risk-free, which does not correspond to the reality, but which can be taken into account, beta i is beta i uh, star, it's always a star, plus beta i star 1 less 2 debt to equity. And if we factor with beta i star, we have beta i star 1 plus d 1 less 2 over equity. We are fully aware of the fact that uh, the corporate debt is not risk-free, but we've seen that the full cost of debt, namely i, is at the end of the day not taken into account in the adjusted cost of capital. So if we take into account the cost of debt, which is only based on the risk free rate, I mean, if we do not take into account the spread of debt, we do not change the cost of capital.